but this afternoon as well, we are focusing on security because there's a heavy security presence in Boko in the Upper East region following uh, the gruesome killing of uh, some persons, um, at least three of them. It is unclear what has triggered this latest attack, but the situation has led to some residents fleeing the town while others remain indoors. The police have so far arrested five suspects in connection uh, to this very attack. We'll find out what's being done by the police um, in the area to prevent further violence. But first, let's touch base with our correspondent, Albert Sorry, who uh, has been monitoring the event for us. Albert, welcome to the show. So do we know what first of all triggered this attack? Give us a, some update on that. Yes, so this recent um, shootings still have to do with the long-standing uh, chieftaincy conflict, which has been uh, ongoing in Boko. Um, for some time, everything had been calm until November last year when we started um, seeing a resurgence of this conflict. And since November, almost every month, um, we would hear reports of shootings and sometimes deaths and injuries. And so this recent shooting, which occurred uh, three days ago, um, there was a downpour at night. And when the people of Boko woke up uh, yesterday morning, um, there had been reports that shootings had taken place at uh, a, a residential uh, property near the cattle market in Boko, where uh, three people uh, from the same family mm. were. The reports we got from the area indicated that uh, a man went into the house and carried out the attack. And so uh, these three people uh, were buried later yesterday afternoon, according to Islamic principles. Um, police had to you know, move into the area, uh, tighten security, uh, because later yesterday there were more shootings, as uh, we will later hear from the Upper East right. Regional Police. Mm. Uh, uh and, and the police is also telling us that they've uh, picked up some five persons um, in connection to this very latest attack. Uh, what's the mood now in the area? What more do we also know about that effort by the police uh, to apprehend the culprits? Yeah, so what the police bureau tells us is that they've arrested these people because they believe they know something as far as this attack is concerned. So they are going to help in the investigations uh, which are ongoing now. Uh, but what they have done now is to review the curfew in Boko, which will now start from 4 p.m. every day instead of uh, 8 p.m., uh, which was the previous time that the curfew usually started. So uh, security has been tightened and they are enforcing this mm. curfew as we speak. Uh, all right, then, Albert, sorry, thank you. Thank you for giving us uh, the latest right now. Let's also hear from the Ghana Police Service in the area. They've been giving some update to the media. Uh, on what the situation is up north. Issue as we have its re emergence, that is uh, three days ago, uh, sporadic shooting were hit and in fact indiscriminate ones as well. Uh, the police and military moved in to ensure we contain the situation. And when we moved in, uh, we were able to contain the situation. However, unfortunately, three people lost their lives. Um, we have also made an arrest of about five people who we believe are connected with the issue that occurred. And we are continuing with that investigation. Uh, police and military are enforcing the curfew, which has been reviewed from five a.m. to 6 p.m. Now it's uh, 4 p.m. to uh, 5 a.m. and we are enforcing that. We want uh, everyone to remain calm. The situation in Boko Asak now is not that chaotic. It's, it's a peaceful area. Um, there are other issues that we have to deal with and that is what we are uh, working on to ensure total peace is restored back to the area. However, we know that peace comes 
from the people themselves. The police and the military, we are doing everything possible to ensure. It happened in, uh, the gunshot were hit in many parts of the uh, uh, municipality. Uh, we have Sabongari, Gigande, and the uh, other parts of Boku municipality. Uh, we cannot say, as I told you early on, we, we had a sporadic shooting, an indiscriminate one, in these places. And as soon as we had uh, uh, those gunshots, already there are 24 hour patrol and snap checkpoints by police and the military in that particular time. So when there is an unusual occurrence in any part of the place, we quickly move in to ensure we can tell the situation. And that is exactly what we did. As to uh, whether it was a targeted one at any particular group of people or not, as I speak to you, I can confirm that investigation has started. And the, the five people who have been arrested, um, what are they being investigated for? Uh, obviously, for possession of firearm uh, and any other charges that may arose will, will, will also. Well, so you just said uh, ASP David Fianco uh, Altry. He's the Upper East Regional uh, Police PRO. Joining us now is Dr. Vladimir Enchidansu, who is a security analyst, joins us via phone. Doc, welcome to the program. Uh, this has been a Thank protracted... You. Thank you for having me. Uh, all right, then. Uh, th this has been a protracted case. Uh, it's not necessarily new. But what's uh, accounting for this latest attacks uh, that, that we're seeing? And what do you see as the undercurrents to, to, to the latest uh, insurrections? Well, normally, such... Uh, intra communal uh, pickups come from several other causes. And uh, when it is fueled by policies, when it is fueled by non resolution, then you have it pro being protracted. We are entering a, a, a situation where it is very intensified. It is uh, entering a period of intractability. And there must be a way to seal it off and try to find a way of building a new generation of people who can live together. It's very unfortunate. It's a mixture of consistency, ethnic, political, and economic uh, causes. And uh, I believe that what we can do is to replicate what we did for Dagbon and see a, a, a minimum of kind of stability and build upon it. What we are seeing in Dagbon, it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that uh, everything is over and we need to continue building the peace bridges. And I think this is exactly what we have to do for Boku also. I've always suggested that we need an FOB in Boku, that is a forward operating uh, battalion. When you have the presence of the security in their forward presence, uh, at times it says and uh, people will not take the law into their own hands the way we have seen in Boku and other places. Well, I guess the concern is not necessarily about Boku because uh, many uh, security experts are also uh, giving uh, reports, uh, for instance, just as we've seen from the West Africa Center for Counter Extremism, they are warning that, for instance, uh, some of these internal happenings could uh, create a fertile ground for terrorist exploitations. So if that's the case, uh, what do we need the authorities doing uh, at the moment to deal with it? Well, with terrorism does not come with a flag. Yes, wherever there are internecine conflicts like this, it creates a receptive space for the terrorism, for terrorists to thrive. And so it might be true that when these things are going on, terrorists would like to settle in there. But what are they settling in there for the Boku area? The point is this, that yes, Terrorists are not stupid. They want an area where they can move about freely or go in and come out. And so it's not the case that just because these things are going on, then the terrorists will just pick their bags and come and settle. They wouldn't do that. And so, yes, I've read the report, uh, which is good, good in the, in the sense of the causality, but then the inferences from their premises do not hold. Uh, terrorists will not just come to a place where they don't know where to move. The areas they are settling, the Sahel area, uh, is, they, have, they already have uh, a whole lot of things going on over there. Uh, the porosity of borders, number one. Number two, 
on government spaces, spaces where you can't find government presence. And therefore, when they settle there, there's no government to attack them or whatever it is. In our case, I don't think that is the case. But then, yes, we need to do something about it so that the terrorists are unable to settle there. That's why I'm suggesting an, an FOB. Mm. Why should we use some other uh, diplomatic ways of trying to kill the intra uh, hiccups? Right. So, so what would be the implication of the FOB? Is, is that to suggest that we'll see more boots on ground? Uh, or what's going to be... So when you have a forward impact? presence, I think the government has already built some FOBs along the borders with uh, Burkina Faso. Mm. It's very good. Uh, with intelligence gathering, you'll be able to know what is going on at whatever point. And the forward presence means that they are very active. The FOBs are very, very active. And so the more they are active, the less the activities of miscreant. So that would be their, their, their uh, remedy to ensure that these things don't escalate into anything at all. They nip it in the bud before even it starts. Uh, and so what projections are you making really on, on this? Um, Come again. What projections really are you making as an expert on this uh, conflict situation? Uh, there are many who say, well, it could go on for some more years. Uh, what's really your projection on this? Well, if nothing is done, the projection is likely to escalate. It will turn into something where you can't touch again. Let me be very blunt with you. Underneath most of these things is the question of bad politics. If you go into, there are about 74 hotspots in Ghana, very, very bad conflicts in Ghana. And under each of them uh, is the political uh, pillar which props the, the, the conflict one way or the other. It's like politics eat into most of the conflict. You know, in this particular case we're talking about, I think there is politics. You can see one ethnic tribe feeling that they belong to one political party and the other feeling they belong to the other. And therefore, any small hitch creates the condition for uh, testing their, their pulses again uh, on the political field in the ethnic kind of conflict. And so, if, if we all should be able to understand that, we don't have to label any political, any, any ethnic group as our politics. You know, uh, it, it's, it's bad. Let me give you an example of the Nanuba Kokomba issue, for example. Why the Nanubas feel strongly that they are NDP? The Kokombas feel strongly they are NDP. And this has always been part of the problem when the, the, the torch is lit, it spreads like wildfire because of politics. If we can, if we can look at that angle also, it, it's important for us. All right, then. I'm grateful that you've been able to join us, Dr. Anchi Vladimir Danso. Thank you for your time.